there everyone! Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup, your go-to for the latest and greatest in data science. This week we're talking about a new way of multiplying matrices, Google's new text-to-video announcement, and more. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another update, and let us know in the comments what your favorite story of the week is. Our first story this week takes a look at this year's State of AI report, published on the 11th of October by Nathan Benayach and Ian Hogarth. Every year, the State of AI report analyzes the most interesting developments in AI in an attempt to trigger informed conversations about the state of AI and its impact on our future. Overall, the report had the following four key takeaways. Firstly, new independent research labs are rapidly open sourcing the closed source output of major labs. Despite the notion that AI research would be increasingly centralized among a few large players, the lowered barriers to entry in data science have led to state-of-the-art research coming out of much smaller, previously unknown labs. Meanwhile, AI hardware remains strongly consolidated to NVIDIA. Secondly, safety is gaining awareness among major AI research entities, with an estimated 300 dedicated safety researchers working at large AI labs compared to under 100 in last year's report. And the increased recognition of major AI safety academics is a promising sign when it comes to AI safety becoming a mainstream discipline. Thirdly, the China-US AI research gap has continued to widen, with Chinese institutions producing 4.5 times as many papers as American institutions since 2010. And lastly, AI-driven scientific research continues to lead to breakthroughs, but major methodological errors like data leakage need to be interrogated further. Even though AI breakthroughs in science continue, researchers warn that methodological errors in AI can leak to these disciplines, leading to a growing reproducibility crisis in AI-based science, driven in part by data leakage. We've covered some of the biggest moments in this AI narrative over the course of the past 23 weekly roundup episodes, so it's very exciting to see all the trends and milestones put together in one retrospective piece like this. To see the report in its entirety, take a look at the link in the description below. In our next story, we'll take a look at Google's announcement of the development of Imagine Video, an AI capable of producing 1280 by 768 videos at 24 frames per second based on a written prompt. According to Google's research paper, which we'll link in the description below, Imagine Video includes several notable stylistic abilities, such as producing videos based on the work of famous painters, generating 3D rotating objects while preserving object structure, and rendering text in a variety of animation styles. Google is hopeful that general-purpose video synthesis models could significantly decrease the difficulty of high-quality content generation. The key to Imagine Video's capabilities is a cascade of seven diffusion models that transform the initial text prompt into a low-resolution video, then upscale that video into progressively higher resolutions with higher frame rates at each step. The final output video is 5.3 seconds long. We spoke about the state of text-to-video in episode 20 of the Weekly Roundup, and was super excited to see this big step being taken in that direction by Google. Do you have any cool text-to-video prompt ideas? Let us know in the comments. Moving on to our next story this week, DeepMind has introduced AlphaTensor, the first AI system for discovering novel, efficient, and provably correct algorithms for fundamental computational tasks like matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is a pillar of deep learning and powers use cases such as processing images on smartphones, recognizing speech commands, generating graphics for computer games, running simulations to predict the weather, and so much more. Companies around the world spend large amounts of money and time developing hardware to efficiently multiply matrices. So even minor improvements to the efficiency of matrix multiplication can have a widespread impact across the entire data science community. For centuries, mathematicians believed that the standard matrix multiplication algorithm was the best that could be achieved in terms of efficiency. But in 1969, German mathematician Volker Strassen shocked the mathematical community by showing that better algorithms do exist. Now, for the first time in 52 years, AlphaTensor has managed to improve on Strassen's two-level algorithm in a finite field, marking a significant step forward for building efficient data science processes. We'll link AlphaTensor's full GitHub repository in the description below, and we can't wait to see the impact that it has across the entire coding community. In our final story this week, another Google AI development called Audio LM is able to hear a snippet of a song and keep on playing. Audio LM generates audio that fits the style of an auditory prompt, including complex sounds like piano music or people speaking, in a way that's almost indistinguishable from the original recording. The technique shows promise for speeding up the process of training AI to generate audio, and it could eventually be used to auto-generate music to accompany videos. 
AI music systems like OpenAI's Jukebox have already generated some impressive sounding results, but most existing techniques for AI-generated audio need people to prepare transcriptions and label text-based training data, which takes a lot of time and human labor. Audio LM is different. It doesn't require transcription or labeling. Instead, sound databases are fed into the program, and machine learning is used to compress the audio files into sound snippets called tokens without losing too much information. This tokenized trading data is then fed into a machine learning model that uses natural language processing to learn the sound's patterns. Take a listen to just how much audio LM improves on past audio generating software. That's it for this week's roundup. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to let us know in the comments what your favorite story of the week is, and make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss an update on the latest and greatest in data science. <laughs>